My name is Sung Kim. Oh, I have a private dining and catering company called Food by Sung. I've been in the industry for about, you know, somewhere between 15 and 20 years. Uh, just, you know, working uh, at restaurants and starting my own business and uh, here we are. Yeah, we're gonna uh, create a harvest table or more like a board. Um, and as you can see, there are just so many different things that we can work with. Um, I just love working with uh, like all the meats and cheeses that are available at Heritage. Also the pickles and the olives and all the sauces. Um, but really it is just to incorporate everything, like whatever is available, like vegetables and fruits and things like that, that people want to really, uh, you know, grab it towards um, and really just creating like an edible piece of art. Sure. Um, so usually I like to work starting with a focus, like a focal point. Um, so we have, you know, various different hardwares here. There's some uh, cake stand, and some plates and things like that. We're probably just gonna utilize the majority of the board. Um, but, you know, I like to have a little bit of height and also to sort of distinguish like what's what, but it doesn't mean that <clears throat> we're only gonna be plating um, charcuteries on this or whatnot. It's going to be sort of all over the place, but it's always more interesting to have a bit of a uh, depth rather than a flat surface. Uh, so, well, there's some really beautiful melon here. And keep in mind that these are, you know, these are gonna be eaten. So, um, you know, you can prep as much as you like, or maybe if you want to leave some, create more, you know, more of a texture. We can do that. Uh, so it is just like choosing a palette, a color, or texture, whatever it might be. And these are definitely some classic. I, I think that's why uh, what you grab first is probably the most important thing. It will get the, the thought process started. Um, so right now I've, I ended up with this very classical combination, but then we'll throw a bunch of different things on it so uh, it doesn't stay too classical. <laughs> Um, it depends on what I'm working with. So if it's much bigger, then maybe I will start with, I mean, it's never like a, a center. Uh, I, I actually do have a, a background in painting. So, so that, that helps me work the composition and, um, you know, just thinking about like where to start. But at the end of the day, it is sort of like, I don't know, did Jackson Pollock think about all that? I don't know, maybe he, he just sort of like went to a certain place and like went crazy. Uh, so uh, there's no real rule per se, um, like wherever, you know, your heart desire. <laughs> These radishes are so beautiful. Um, again, we could just put the whole one down, but it's, it's nice to have uh, various different textures and colors. You know, whatever it's most convenient works for everybody. Like obviously you don't have to have a uh, knife skill to put this together. And these are all pre-sliced, so that's also very easy to work with. My hands are going to like easier places, like really pretty ones first. <laughs> okay, well, let's introduce more of these, these guys. Like, you know, you want to be thoughtful of your eaters, so. I will cut these in manageable pieces so they're closer to bite-sized. Oh, larger pieces, like I love mortadella and I love the shape, but if they come very big, we have to cut them. So yeah, so those are sometimes like when you actually have to work with more of a geometric shape rather than organic. I mean, I've circled always definitely geometry, but it's um, organic at the same time. So those are easier to work with. Um, but if we have to cut it into more like a triangle or like rectangular, uh, I, I find it a little challenging to work with those shapes, but maybe other people find it differently. Um, and, you know, I love creating some height. So uh, that's why you know, you know, in the industry they call it like the rosette or different kind of shapes. Uh, but it's always welcome to create more of an organic uh, height, something with a height rather than just a flat, um, flat surface. Ooh, so I love working with these cheeses. So yeah, you definitely want to have a variety of different kind of textures. Um, you know, these are all soft cheeses. Also even the temperature too, that 
you know, most likely these will be out for hours <laughs> um, or until you're done eating them. So, um, and you know, that's why they actually are so successful for something like this because they do take a, um, you know, they can, they can easily handle the temperature or the, the length of time they're gonna be sitting out. Uh, for something like this, I actually do wanna expose the flesh a little bit so it's easier for people to consume. Wow, these are like super sticky. <laughs> Love it. Who inspired you to get into the culinary world? Do you have a mentor or um, No, I mean this was very uh, planned out. <laughs> like I had no no choice of you know just winging it. Um, like I had a career in academia, so uh, it, it took me a while to actually make a decision of. of go into culinary school, like, uh, well, quit my job first. <laughs> yeah, but I think a lot of people say their mom. I, my mom actually just happens to be an amazing, amazing home cook. Um, I think she would have been a really great chef had she gotten the opportunity. Um, but instead she ended up going into science, so. But that's, that's actually what really shows in her cooking too, is that she really thinks about everything, the process, the science behind it. Um, and that's, that's really admirable. So I think these are just a perfect little size like that. So, you know, it's just basically like a spread. So we could actually just like leave it kind of like this. Um, yeah, I like to try to have at least like one type of like a jam or preservative um, and at least one mustard or something savory. And, uh, yeah, the olives can, they can just sort of like freestyle. Although we can like leave it in this container as well. Like whenever we put out something like this, like we always hear like, oh, this was such a success. Like it was like a conversational piece and like it brought everybody together around the table. So um, not only this is a beautiful edible art, you can also, you know, like create an environment where people can gather. Are there any like herbs to add to your Oh yeah, sage and rosemarys are really great. Um, yeah, I, I particularly love working with sage because they just are just beautiful, leafy, and depending on the size. Um, yeah, sometimes I like to use something like this, but if it's like a much bigger setup, but today's not the day. Bye. Actually, you know, this actually might be nice to use some fronds. It's like a little. And I noticed you do all of your work with maybe one to two knives, you know, is there... Oh yeah, I mean, I think you don't really need like a large knife, like this is perfectly fine to to uh, use for everything. But this, this is not necessarily edible, but I think it's nice to use them as a like, bouquet of green. <laughs> also like the fennel is good because they're in quite a bit of uh, salumis and charcuteries. Like whether it's seeds or also, ooh, these are very nice. Ooh, so cute. And they don't all have to be, um, you know, different colors. I also find a value in putting similar vegetables, I mean, color vegetables together. So that, like all the greens or all the reds, like they also tend to uh, work really well together as well. Ooh, I don't know. Well, pickles are always good. Or like cornichons and uh, different kind of mustards. Oh, shoot. Ah, we have all this beautiful bread, but um, you know, this will be like chance that you have like a separate play for the bread, but also like, you know, get engaged people and like break them. I think that's probably a good thing. Uh, but you know, we ran out of room. So I would say this is done. 